Hi, I'm Philip. I'm a researcher on the Cruise Project. Today I'm going to show you how to make a grid of tablet biscuits. I'm going to tell you about the alphabetic cuneiform writing system. When you're doing research into ancient writing systems, we find it's really good to have a go yourself. So it's one thing to look at writing on the page or on a computer screen, but it's another to actually get your hands dirty and try writing for yourself. You learn so much more about it. At the Cruise Project, we try writing on clay, we try plasticine, but my favourite thing to do is to write on biscuits. Because not only do you get to practice your ancient writing systems, but you also have something delicious to eat at the end of it. And actually, with the recipe I'm going to show you today, it's really easy to do. Ugarit was a city in what's now Syria. In the late Bronze Age, around 1300 BC, they developed a script based on cuneiform. Cuneiform is what we call the kind of writing that was invented in Mesopotamia, where signs were made by pressing little triangular indentations into soft clay with a stylus. Mesopotamian cuneiform has been in use for over a thousand years by this point. It was a vastly complicated system with hundreds of signs. What they did in Ugarit was to take this idea and simplify it, using it to write an alphabet of just 30 signs. This was one of the first alphabets ever produced, and the earliest one where we have surviving material in quite large quantities. We have thousands of tablets from Ugarit covering everything from mythology and religion to economic administration or medicine for horses. Because we want to press cuneiform signs into it, we need a biscuit that takes a good impression and doesn't distort as it bakes. You could use shortbread for this, but what I like to do is use speculos recipe. And that's a biscuit from the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, they're really easy to make and they take a good impression. They're often stamped with designs. Uh, and around this time of year, they're also great because they're really Christmassy. So the first thing we need to do is to make our spice mix. Now you could just use mixed spice for this, but it gives a better result and it's also more fun if you make your own. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to take a couple of cloves and put them into a pestle and mortar, and then we can put those down. Um, next, we'll put in a good, healthy um, amount of cinnamon, some mixed spice, a little bit of nutmeg, some ginger, and finally a bit of cardamom. And you don't have to be too prescriptive on this. Uh, you can use whatever spices you have lying around, whatever you like. If there's anything you don't like, feel free to leave that out. Uh, this is the advantage of making your mix yourself. Okay, so once you've made your spice mix, next you need to make a biscuit dough. So to start off with that, we need 225 grams of plain flour. And to that, you just need to add a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. Um, two. And that give that a good mix. So next, you need to mix 115 grams of butter or margarine with 130 grams of brown sugar. You can use either light or dark brown sugar, whichever you prefer. I find that for this recipe, the light brown sugar works a little bit better for my taste. Uh, so we just mix those together. Okay, that should be fine. Next, we just add a couple of tablespoons of milk to that. And again, we beat that until it's smooth. Might be a little bit runny at this stage. That's fine. Okay, so now we just need to mix in our flour into the butter and sugar mix. And then that's it. That's all we need to do. So we mix our flour into that, and then we can add our spices. Uh, you want about three teaspoons of spices. I think I've got about three teaspoons here. At this point, you should be able to smell them. Um, it starts to smell like Christmas biscuits. So just give that a good mix, combine it all nicely. Uh, you can use your hands at this point as well. It gets a bit easier if you use your hands to bring it together. So to distribute the spices nice and evenly throughout the mix. Uh, bring it together into a bowl. Give it a, a little bit of a knead. Once you get the 
slices evenly distributed throughout the dough. And that's your biscuit dough ready. So once you've got your dough ready, um, you need to chill that for a little while before you actually start writing. So we just wrap this up in some cling film. And then that goes into the fridge for about 30 minutes. While that's sitting in the fridge, we need to decide what we're going to write. Um, as I said before, Ugaritic covers all kinds of different things. There are mythological epics, there are administrative tablets. Today we're going to keep things quite simple. Um, we're going to do this abecedarian. Abecedarian is just a fancy word for an alphabet. So this is a tablet with the Ugaritic alphabet written out on it, probably as a scribal practice by a trained scribe. But you can look up Ugaritic tablets to copy online. Um, I'll put a link to some in the description of this video. You can also go to the Cruise website and we have worksheets on there which have various ancient writing systems and you can use those to write your own messages. The main thing to notice about Ugaritic is that like modern Hebrew and mo like Arabic, it doesn't actually write the vowels. So if you're writing your own message, you need to make sure you leave those out. Okay, let's get the dough out of the fridge then. <laughs> So what we need to do is roll this out and then get writing. So Ugaritic tablets um, come in a wide range of sizes and they're usually quite thick. They can be up to like three or four centimetres thick. Obviously we're making biscuits so we want ours to be a bit thinner than that. Uh, about five millimetres, anything like that is fine. Once you've got your, your dough rolled out, you just want to cut out some tablet shapes. So, again, um, Ugaritic tablets are often quite small. Um, this abecedarium that I'm making is actually not much more than three or four centimetres across. So I'm actually going to make this quite a bit bigger than it would be in reality. Oops. So it just makes it much easier to write, and also it's much better to have a nice sized biscuit. To make, the, uh, to make the impressions on the biscuits, I'm going to use the fat end of a chopstick. So for this you need the ones that have square end, and quite often they're sort of smoothed off around the corner, so uh, the sharper these corners are the better. You might have to get a piece of sandpaper and you can rub it on there and that sharpen things up a bit. And I'm just going to start by pressing in uh, this corner and the edge of the stylus into the dough. Uh, don't be surprised if you have to do a few tries to get a hang of this. It is quite tricky when you're first doing it, uh, just to know exactly which bits you need to press in to make what kind of sign shapes. Uh, so I'm going to start with the Aleph here, and then the B. Once you've got your inscription written out, you need to lay your biscuits on a lined baking tray and put them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. This one's been heated to about 160 degrees C. Okay, they've been in for about 15 minutes or so, so let's have a look at them and hopefully they should be done. So they've spread out a little bit, but they're still pretty clear impressions, not too bad. And they'll still be quite soft at this stage, but that's fine. Um, we'll leave them on a wire tray and they'll firm up nicely. Only a few decades after this writing system was invented, Ugarit was destroyed in the massive wave of upheavals that ended the Mediterranean Bronze Age. Alphabetic cuneiform fell out of use, but of course that wasn't the end for alphabets. Not far to the south, another kind of alphabet had been developing in Phoenicia and Palestine. When Phoenician sailors ventured out into the Mediterranean in search of trade in raw materials, they took their alphabet with them. They passed it on to the Greeks, and the Greeks passed it on to the Romans. And from the Romans, of course, it came to us. So although the Ugaritic writing system wasn't around for very long, the legacy of that period of experimentation with alphabets in the Near East is still with us. 
So hopefully by making your biscuits, you've learned a little bit about what it's like to write in cuneiform, what the challenges and difficulties are, um, but also you'll have had a bit of fun and at least at the end of it you've got some nice biscuits as well. Thanks very much and if you enjoyed this do have a look at the Cruise Project blog or follow us on Twitter. Hopefully we'll be back sometime soon with more ancient writing baking.